Hey everyone, so this is Matt from Studio 41. We are here to wrap up the remainder of the Let's Play with the bonus video. So, for one thing, yes, Elgato is terrible with recording this kind of stuff since once again it corrupted my files and it's not even recording in the um, format that it does on my MacBook. So, other than that, I'm going to have to post up the bonus episodes as well as this part. So, as mentioned earlier, this is the daytime version of Imperial Academy Heist. It is the only mission in the game that does have a day-night cycle in it. Now, one thing I will say ahead of the bonus episode is that I didn't get to show completely how you get a TIE Fighter during the day, since the whole thing glitched out and it didn't let the TIE Fighter crash land on the ground to um, let me capture it. But it's pretty simple. You knock out all of these arrays using your ion cannon then you fly over the mountains right next to you on the right and then you go to where there's a um, a communication tower and right next to it you'll see a TIE fighter sitting there now the TIE fighter is supposed to take off and I don't know if it's supposed to attack you or if it just takes off after you shoot it with an ion cannon but for some reason it just didn't do that for me so that's how you capture the TIE fighter during the day and then in the bonus episode, I didn't get to show the night footage of capturing the the um, upgrade that you get in that level, but I'll sh I did include a part, though, where I did fly through it with the Y-Wing, just to like, give you a general idea of where it is. So as I mentioned during the night episode, or I may have, I'm just not really completely remembering, but in this case, you just use your ion cannon, knock out these satellite arrays, or the radar sensors, and then... Once you get past them, you'll be able to enter the base. Now here you can alternatively avoid this whole area and just completely avoid getting detected. The only thing is once you enter the actual academy, they instantly detect you and then all the TIE Fighters and any other Imperials around are all going to wing to attack you. But since I decided to fly through this canyon, I was easily spotted by those ATSTs and then TIE Fighters, so now they know I'm here, so... It kind of renders the whole sneaking in through the canyon pointless, but I guess like since it doesn't really give you a specific amount of time on how long it takes to get through or no get to the base without the shuttle getting locked down, since I've never been able to just mess around long enough to get that. But um, I think it's maybe around four or five minutes or so, probably less, considering this game. But that's how you do with um, getting the. Imperial shuttle, lockdown, and whatnot. Here they come. But um, other than that, it's fairly the same as the night mission. You simply go through, you know, maybe take out a few TIE fighters if you're trying to go for any medals or anything of the sort. And then you just head on over, same procedure, and you know, knock out the turrets, and then you take out the um, whatever enemies are around you. And once again, you know, the Imperial shuttle, it's still not the best fight, or not the best craft around. And as you notice, I do have this, the cluster bombs only because I'm using my old file for this. And um, I just did this at a different time than when I did the upgrade video since I had to actually create another new file since I completely forgot that I deleted that old Studio 41 one that I made for the Let's Play. And that, and I also got all the, let, or the upgrades for that part, so I had to redo a lot of stuff to get to getting where... Um, I get enough footage for all the upgrades. But yes, in this case, some of my craft was upgraded, at least in um, this file. I think I actually didn't get a few other upgrades, because I know you noticed that I don't have the shield upgrade, which is kind of surprising, because I always thought I had that one. But yeah, this is it pretty simple. You just pick up the Imperial Shuttle, and then you're on your way out. The one thing I always found interesting is that like, even though they know that they detected you, you never got why your allies don't come in to at least help in taking out any other additional craft just in case. But I guess, you know, they just wanted to keep it, I guess, as small as possible. Then again, the Empire obviously knows that it was the rogues who took it. Alright, and with that, we'll be moving on to the additional bonus content. And as you'll notice, I did get a silver medal at least. Sometime in the past, I just didn't go for the gold. But other than that, we'll continue on. Alright, so here we are on to the bonus missions. So the first one will be the Death Star Escape. 
Now, as I said before, it's still on post-op just because, once again, this dumb capture card just didn't capture everything, so let's keep on going. And I did have to skip that one part just because I ended up actually failing this mission somehow, just because on my TV this level is incredibly dark, so I had to fix the brightness of my TV while this game was running, and I apparently missed a bunch of TIE Fighters in a while um, prior to it. So happens when you try to play when there's virtually no light on, even though on this it seems to be somewhat okay. But aside from that, it's pretty simple. You're just moving the turret around, shooting out in TIE Fighters as they come and go. Only thing is because you have no reticle, you're pretty much having to base it all on just where the lasers go in general, but it's not too bad. Um, other than that, you really don't have to worry about accuracy too much since it's not really counted against you that much, though in my case I just didn't really feel like bothering messing around with the accuracy bonus, I just wanted to show off just this level, just for the bonus purposes, even though I think the highest I have is a bronze medal in this, but you know, um, it's pretty straightforward, I mean, you're not going to have to worry about flying around anywhere, you can't really die in this unless you fail the mission, and... I'd say you know, it doesn't really take too long just to get used to the whole where the lasers are going since I'd say it's fairly centered into what your viewing is. And also obviously since you're targeting computers up you pretty much have no worries about targeting computer or anything like this sort. You know, no worries about friendlies or any of that kind of stuff to deal with. But yeah, other simply than that, it's basically the whole mission, I mean it would be nice to at least talk some more about this, but that's really basically it. There's still two more of them out there. No, it is kind of interesting though, like when you see the alternate kind of mission failed things, just because you know this is, this kind of stuff is really tied into the camp, or at least into the plot of the movies. So I mean, it's just something new to just see the Millennium Falcon being destroyed right in the middle of Episode Four, and it's just. It just makes you think, well, shit. Now in this case, I'm, it pretty much assumes that you're playing as Luke Skywalker, just because, just by the voice acting, that you are pretty much not as, um, not Han Solo or any of them. But, uh, I don't know if I, I don't know, right now I'm just trying to remember, because right now I do not have the sound on to this game, since it interferes with my mic, but I do not think that Luke has really much dialogue. And like that, that's the mission. So yeah, I did have a bronze medal in this. And let me see, yeah, so your accuracy and your enemies killed, which I don't know how I got that so low, but yeah, your accuracy, it really doesn't matter if it's that great, but I mean, I was just firing off in random positions. And now for this part is the asteroid field from episode five. Now in this part, for this first half, you're simply just trying to evade all the TIE Fighters and just escape those Star Destroyers, which you're not going to have to worry about them pursuing you in any way, since they pretty much essentially crashed into each other, even though they didn't really take too much damage. But um, right now you're just simply escaping, and you usually have to fire forward just in order to have the aft cannons fire and destroy any TIE Fighters that come up for you from behind, which is pretty much the only way you will um, have to worry about them. The thing about this level is that you can die once to get a gold medal since there's all these things from TIE Fighters to all these asteroids that will pretty much get you to you in one way or the other. Though you can, in theory, beat this level in without just losing any lives. It's just kind of difficult to do so, at least for me it is. But yeah, this level this level in the previous one, I mean, they're alright. This one, I just don't really find that.
that interesting just because I think it feels like it goes a tad bit too long, in my opinion. And that's been like that's been something I never really talked about in the earlier missions is that in the earlier missions for this game, there are some levels that really last too short for my own interest. And I guess like I think this purpose of Rogue Squadron, at least in this game, felt kind of more like an arcade shooter. But even say something closer like Ace Combat, which is considered a, a arcade flight sim, has longer missions than this. Oh, this is suicide. There's nowhere to go. We're going to get pulverized if we stay out here much longer. I'm going in closer to one of the big ones. There, that looks pretty good. Yes, after dodging the, I think that's called the space worm, but I may be wrong. But, but yeah, as as I was saying earlier, with the whole, you know, mission length, I mean, even Ace Combat is a, a um, like an arcade flight sim. But even missions in that game usually go on for at least maybe 10, 15 minutes. Whereas in this game, average mission may last maybe around five to seven minutes, depending on what you're doing of a sort. But yeah, it just seems like this mission just kind of drags on a bit. Just because you're really just flying through an empty asteroid field, there's not really too much you're dodging. And I mean, heck, even this portion, I think even in the movie, I'm trying to remember, even in the movie they weren't even chased by TIE fighters after escaping the space swarm, so... And that right there is where I had my first death from flying into an asteroid. But yeah, I mean, it's it's adding gameplay, so I mean, it just, just keeps the mission going, but, I don't know, it's not my favorite mission in this game, um, if I did have one, it's a good question, I'd say probably my, the one mission I probably like the most, maybe Battle of Endor, just because you have a lot of variety in the ships you can choose for that mission, so I would say that I would like to have seen Battle of Endor expanded on, and just have be able to take on multiple Star Destroyers, kind of like something more like along the lines of the movie because they did do an extension of it in the third game, Rogue Squadron 3, but it's more just taking out a few of the Star Destroyers and then going on and take out the Super Star Destroyer in the fleet. But who knows, but since EA now owns the rights to this to the Star Wars franchise and since Factor 5 has no longer been around, bound, I think for five, six years, maybe longer than that. Chances of a Rogue Squadron 4 or even kind of a reboot like they did with Battlefront, chances are it probably may not happen. Yeah, that's the one thing I had my biggest gripe with um, Battlefront was that they didn't really do too much with having, like, uh, was it, flight controls. That was something interesting I found with uh, Battlefront's, or, yeah, Battlefront with their flight controls because it felt way too heavy in terms of turning. I know they're trying to put, it felt like they're trying to put like actual flight controls into starships, which there's one thing I would kind of like to see them see done with, say like a flight semi kind of Star Wars games is to have them, um, like rather than turning, you actually roll your craft into bank and maybe even give you the option just to turn regularly. It's just my thought. that this is the one mission that I did get a gold medal on um, it was pretty much pure luck when I did it that one time but yeah once you get a gold medal it really doesn't bother only it really does keep track of what you do I think it just shows what you got and then moves on because you don't have any of that and for some reason I was going back because I was just checking to see if I didn't miss anything but yeah there's really nothing up until you get up to here once you start playing as the Empire and then there's also the last one, the Endurance, which I covered a little bit. We'll get to the Endurance, you know why I didn't stick around with that one. 
So on this part, always use the tie advanced. The Imperial Shuttle is complete crap as you'll know from the um, Academy Heist level and the regular TIE Fighters. They're pretty mad too since they don't have shields or anything, nor do they have any second we secondary weapons. So small they're evading our turbo lasers. We'll have to destroy them ship to ship, get the crews to their fighters. So in this case, we are actually defending the Death Star from being blown up by the rebels. So this one is a bit of an alternate kind of ending to the original first mission. And in this case, I think this mission could probably be the more it's the more challenging definitely of the Imperial missions. Simply because these rebel craft have a tendency to really fly erratically once you get close to them. And just because of how limited the TIE Fighters are within their shooting. Even though once you get up close, the lasers will at least align closer to annihilate any enemy craft. But because of that, this mission can be a bit challenging. And the one thing that you will notice is that when you do turn, you will see rebel um, pilots flying right behind you and that's because they do try to gang up behind you so that way they can shoot you down but you seldom see any rubble it's like actually follow you just to shoot you down like what the TIE fighters do in the main campaign and as I did I just sent my usually just send my allies out to attack the fighters just because they'll be able to, to knock them out though in this game your ally your wingman can be killed which it will happen, which did happen in this case, because this part of the mission I actually had to redo just because I ended up not getting all the rebels in time and I ended up <clears throat> having the Death Star pretty much have the cannon ending where it blew up. Though Vader, he still doesn't live, it just shows the Death Star blowing up with the, his tie advance flying out. And then, you know, going off to back to wherever he went to after episode 4. But in this case, we're actually trying to rewrite that, so... <clears throat> and one thing you will notice... You may notice it once you get towards the edge, but sometimes when you follow a flight of Rebels, particularly with X-Wings, is that they tend to spaz out as they're flying in midair, simply because they're trying to avoid being shot down, but at the same time, the game's programming is just having some trouble figuring out where to send them off to. And so they'll wind up just bouncing up and down while flying in a straight line or so. And they also really tend to draw you outside the battlefield so that way you can't follow them and it forces you to turn back around. Yeah, one thing I would like to have seen is that they had made the targeting computers more like they are in the movies where it kind of shows an image of the, the enemy starship and then you just pull the trigger and if you're close enough to them, at least aligns your lasers to shoot them down. But I mean, it's consistency, I guess. Now, I would say that fighting with these TIE Fighters is probably the hardest for accuracy bonus just because not only do they fire one shot, they fire multiple. And I don't know how they count with like multi-firing whether if it's just one shots considered one shot or if it's all maybe six shots counted against you but it's fairly easy to knock to completely um, miss your target and especially with these which I swear the TIE fighters for some reason have more trouble shooting down targets than rebel craft engage at will as you wish Lord Vader yeah, it seems just a little bit glitching with capture card. Yeah, like I mean, I already I already know I covered this earlier in the, in the let's play, but I don't know. Recording Elgato on the PC is just it's just a mess. I mean, it, I had it set up so that way it would record in an MPEG file, which it did for this and it did for the other ones. But for some reason, it still continues to record as a .ts, which it doesn't do that at all on my MacBook, it just reports it as regular MPEG. Yeah, 
you know, it just records as that and then it happens to just give me the separate audio and video or yeah the separate audios for my commentary or whatever and the game audio but my PC drops out a .ts file and a bunch of other files that have really no use other than maybe for you know I guess any technical purposes but other than now on PC it's just it's just lousy but you know I don't know if I'll ever switch to another capturing device I thought about maybe switching to Hotbog but for now I'm just gonna stick with what I have only because I don't really record or do much in terms of live streams or let's plays just because I don't really have the time to do them as clearly shown by this let's play given it took me about almost a year just to get this one out but you know getting back to this game yes there's a bunch of um, rebel craft that you are I'm trying to shoot down here now one thing that you will find out eventually later once I shoot down all these Y wings is that they reset all the way back at the very start of the trench so they could be near the near the exhaust port but once you shoot them down you then have to fly all the way back to the very beginning of the trench to shoot down the rebels that just recently entered and it's pretty simple it's only three ways you know one first being Y wings the second being X wings and the third being X wings kind of similar to the actual movie where you first said Y wings go in they tried to take out but then they were all shot down by Vader and then there was a second group of X wing or the first wave of X wings that went in they for the most part survived except for the lead pilot there who did manage to get a proton torpedo but you know completely missed hit the wall and then you know he eventually got shot down and then third wave is obviously the second badge of X-Wings that successfully took out the Death Star only in this case that whole story completely changes which is interesting that you don't see the Millennium Falcon at all in this because it would have been cool if you could have kind of like a mini air battle boss between Luke and Han Solo just as a little you know just a little nod to the movies and also give like a good piece of background to alternate history kind of thing which would be interesting in Star Wars, but I don't know how you would go ahead and do that since if you took out Luke, say, like this early in it, the Empire essentially would have won because I don't know how the Rebels would have been able to do that or if they could have managed to shoot down or destroy the Death Star with uh, without knowing, uh, I guess, the Force or whatever. It's just something interesting since the first time they tried, you know, firing a proton torpedo, it completely missed. Uh, nice. Yeah, and as I continue flying around. Now, for those that are new or are just watching this video out of completely out of nowhere, if you did notice that I did not, or like I completely abruptly stop whenever there's a cutscene, it was just something that I did just to allow it to play and give a bit more context to the missions. It's just my own personal thing to do. It's not really much to say when you have to cover so much of it in a, I don't know, in a long amount of time just because in this portion of the game I just had to, you know, as I said, go all the way back, shoot down Rebels and head back on up to um, prevent the Death Star from being blown up. Which I guess is kind of the game's way of, I guess in a way, punishing you, I guess, for taking so long to take out Rebels that then you have to fly all the way back and then shoot them down which will then cost you time on purpose of medals and I do not think I've ever gotten a medal for this just because one the amount of times I die and two for time and accuracy and everything and the one thing I do think wish they could have done is that you could have at least had some allies form up with you 
or at least borrow some TIE Fighters that are just flying randomly around, which is something I find kind of weird with this game, because even though it's called Rogue Leader, you're only really commanding two other wingmen, rather than, say, you know, all the X-Wings or all the Y-Wings or whichever, you know, group you're assigned to, but, you know, well, it's just, it's, it's what happens. that we're done with this part of the mission and the next is a endurance which endurance doesn't take too long to get through the thing about endurance is that it's or no sorry not endurance again and when you do these post ops you really do not know what you're really gonna be talking about just because I don't know, that has been a long day with me editing this and editing another video that I'm doing for... It's going to be coming out a little bit later after this video. But, yeah, I don't know why this thing keeps kind of skipping like that. I guess it's just another capture card thing. But, yes, we're getting our revenge on Yavin right after they blew up the Death Star. Now this one is certainly the shorter missions of the of the two Empire ones. Now as for this, all we're doing is just blowing up transports and that's really the whole mission. Um, you can destroy any rebel craft for the purpose of getting you know additional stuff though. I would really only go after the ones that are on the ground simply because they're the easiest targets because the ones in the air are just about impossible to catch because they all try to rush you in an attempt to prevent you from shooting down any of those transports. And there will be a few that will escape into hyperspace. And as right there, you know, there, you will find Rebel Scrap. Usually those won't pick up or take off for a while. But I mean, this is a fairly simple mission. It's not too difficult to, to worry about. So, like I said, you know, your wingmates can die, so that can be a bit of a a troubling thing which I always try to keep them in formation just because it helps with knocking out these transports position, and if you send them after the fighters odds are they're gonna die anyways even though strangely enough you'll still get commands asking to go after the fighters or to stay in formation like that one of my allies just got sh shot down and as you can see on the radar above I have plenty of rebels following me, just trying to shoot me down, as well as my wingmate. In position, awaiting orders. Now, one thing is, you can shoot down those Corellian Corvettes. The only thing though is that they actually have fairly decent aiming in terms of shooting at you, so I wouldn't really try messing with them. Then they also take a good deal of abuse before being completely destroyed. The They're launching more fighters. Now, as right here, we just gotta wait for a bit until the gate opens, because right now we cannot enter the the gate to shoot down the remaining okay. transports. But as soon as it opens. There's going to be a flood of fighters coming out after you. And the one thing that you will notice is that if you do take, try to turn around sharply and see who's chasing you. Usually you'll be chased by X-Wings and Y-Wings, but even occasionally you'll see snow speeders following you. And as we see right here, open to the first batch. And then the Rebels, they will follow you in there, so they will start rushing you in the hangar. And... I'm actually using one of Vader's secondary weapons, which is these cluster mis these cluster missiles, which do, I think, barely anything in terms of taking out any of the ships, but it's usually better to just take them out there, or at least use them just for the hell of it, you know. 
whatever damage works, works. And like that, I got killed simply because fire flew right into me after I shot it. But as I did, still continue using the missiles. At this point, really having that command cross come up is completely redundant since my allies are all dead. That and I, even if they do survive, they, they may follow you in there, but for the most part, all your TIE fighters are all outside. You're fighting whatever forces are outside. And now we can head on over to the endurance section. So one thing I did have to bring up once again is that I did have to redo this part simply because, once again, Elgato once again screwed up and actually completely cut off the recording that I had originally done, but luckily it was only on the endurance, so it didn't really do too much damage for, to me. But um, when I did it on my MacBook, though, ran just fine, so it's definitely something about running it on the PC, which seems to be the issue. But other than that, there isn't really too much to talk about with in terms of the endurance mission. So what you're do doing is just that you're sending your craft over to the second star, or not second star, or the second death star, and you're essentially just wiping out waves of enemy fighters, and essentially that's really it. Now for this mission, it seems like it's fairly simple to do, just or at least to get medals and stuff, but only thing though is that to get gold in this level, you have to play, I've heard on average maybe around two and a half to three hours just to get enough waves to get a gold medal, and that's provided if you survive long enough and if your targeting and everything's accurate enough. But I mean, that just doesn't really seem too appealing for this. I mean, I know the, the third Rogue Squadron also had an endurance mode in it, and I didn't really find that all that interesting. I mean, the only thing you can really get out of endurance is just practice, but then again, you really have to play through campaign anyways just to get endurance unlocked, provided, you know, you have the medals for it, and even then, you know, if you're able to unlock endurance, then you're at least somewhat, de you're pretty decent at this game, so ultimately, you kind of just find it as a bit more padding into the game, just simply because of how short this game is, so it's just padding by just adding more and more things to destroy, and that's basically it. I know this part just sounds kind of like I'm really bored, and that's because I'm just not a big fan of endurance at all. I mean, it's it's kind of really pointless to me just because I don't really find that much entertainment out of it. Now, I mean, there may be other people who might find, you know, doing endurance and, you know, interesting. You know, those who are completionists who will do the endurance just to, you know, get that gold medal since if you unlock everything or at least get every gold, you'll be able to, you know, unlock some additional stuff. But all in all, it's really not much it's not really something I'm going to really invest my time into getting gold on. And pretty much after this, I'm just going to be going on to doing the additional video, which is the just the bonus stuff, which is showing where you get all the unlocks, which I'm not going to do any voice work on it simply because it's not really going to be worth much. It's pretty self-explanatory just by the visuals alone. So just for an earlier outro kind of thing, this is Matt from Studio 41, and I hope you enjoyed watching this bonus content as well as the regular Let's Play. And be sure to continue checking us out, our stuff on the website, or maybe not website, on our YouTube. Sorry, it's been a long day. And also, recently we just got a VidMe account, so we're doing pretty well on there. So if you would like to follow us on VidMe, be sure to check us out. So with that, this is Matt from Studio 41. Have a nice day. You've received the Advanced Shield Tech Upgrade. Look, enemy fighters approaching from all directions. We're surrounded. I copy, Wedge. We've got to blast our way through. You've received the Advanced Proton Torpedo Tech Upgrade.
you've received the advanced laser tech upgrade. One more to go. We're armed and ready to go. Try to take out the communication relays. Time is critical because the Star Destroyer patrols will be back soon. Received the advanced cluster missile tech upgrade. Awaiting your orders, Wedge. Attack my guns. You heard the man. Let's take care of those guns. Rogue leader, this is the frigate. We're under attack. They're going after the frigate. We've got to protect the frigate at all costs. You've received the advanced proton bomb tech upgrade. You've received the homing proton torpedo tech upgrade. Communication's gone. It'll be hard for them to find me. You've received the advanced concussion missile tech upgrade. Receive the homing missiles tech upgrade. Are those fighters? Engaging fighters. You've received the homing cluster missile tech upgrade. You've received the targeting computer upgrade. 